Hi everyone, um, I had the intention of showing you a video using FW Acrylic Inks but uh, for some reason the video didn't start recording until we're at the stage that you can see now. But the gist of the thing is that I had a uh, quarter size imperial watercolour paper which I covered with gesso. I taped it down to my board and then divided it into fours with masking tape. Then I clear water over certain areas, dropped in the inks to let them merge and do as you can see here and what I'm doing now is I'm just using some uh, a neutral mis mixed up with the colours that I've been using which is the orange and the black um, and white uh, and um, that's what I've got so this is where we are now so I'm sorry about that but let's carry on um, what I've done here I've taken the tape off as you can see and it doesn't really look much, I, I quite agree, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into four and then um, we'll have a little look at it and see what it looks like then. I just hope I can see the pencil marks that I put down uh, to guide me to, um, to cut it. They were very, very faint. So just cutting it now into four with my um, handy little... Uh, cutter that I've got here. I bought this a couple of years ago and it was the best thing ever. Um, I got it on Amazon so if you're interested have a look on Amazon. It's Fiskars and it's a, um, I suppose you'd call it a guillotine, I don't know, craft cutter. <laughs> uh, but there we go. So just cut that up and So we've got four pieces. Then what I did, I laid them out and I got a um, plain white mount and just popped it over each one just to give me an idea of, of what I'd got there before I actually did anything to it. Um, and it's quite surprising, you know, you get a mount around something and it really sort of isolates everything else that's going on. And, you know, you, it's surprising what you've got there. Um, so what I then did was um, I went into each one with my um, food pen. It's by a company called Sailor and it's got a bent nib, but it allows you to do thick and thin strokes um, without changing the pen. Um, it uses um, just normal fountain pen ink, so it's not waterproof, so um, I can't put anything else over this. But I love using it, so, um, you know. But if you wanted to have a go at this, use um, you can use watercolours instead of the inks. Um, so you don't have to use the inks. Um, and you can use a pencil, you can use a biro, or you can use a black pen. It's entirely up to you, should you de decide to do any further marks. Now, on this one, I've um, decided that there's some trees in the background that I can see. There was a bit of barbed wire from a... Um, a line. I've put some um, sort of spiky grass in, um, and um, here we've got a brick wall. I love doing these because um, it allows me to use my imagination, and I nearly always revert to the landscape in north of England. Um, for a while, when I was younger. Um, I went to school, or well, my father worked up there, so my school was in um, the West Riding of Yorkshire, and we were very, very close um, to the Pennines, and would often go up there um, at the weekends, and it, I just seemed to revert to that. Um, although I live here in Norfolk, now on the coast, I still find that landscape in Yorkshire just so... Oh, evocative, if that's the right word, and uh, it just, it's obviously stamped in my brain. <laughs> um, right, was that one's done. Um, here's the next one. Oh dear, what can we do with this? Something will crop up, I know it will. There, see that's gone thick, that pen. Um, if I lay it flatter, the nib more area of the nib touches the paper if I hold it more upright I get a finer line um, so it's so so versatile um, trees again by the looks of it 
I think what I'll do is I'll just let the video run on and let you watch what I'm doing but I think you'll probably get the gist um, and then I'll, I'll come back to you closer to the end and uh, let you know um, a little bit more. Okay, speak to you later. Hi, I'm back. Um, we're here on the last last one now. I never really know what to do with the videos, whether people would rather watch in silence or to have a bit of music. I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea and my choice of music might not be yours. So, I mean, let me know. I'd be quite interested, really. Um, it's a difficult choice. <laughs> anyway, so we're here on the last one. And you can see how adding, you know, a few... Um, pieces of interest, you know, um, really sort of creates um, a landscape. And um, I'm sure if you tried it, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you who follow me now or are watching this are actually, um, you know, crafters or doodlers or painters, um, you know, whether you um, do this sort of thing or really want to have a go but you know I mean as I said you can use watercolour paint or acrylic or anything inks you don't have to 
use the products that I've used and you just need a pencil or a biro um, and, um, you know, see what you can make of things. See what your imagination brings you. That's what it's all about, um, which is all good for the uh, soul. And uh, in these times, we certainly need something to help us with our um, mental well-being. And painting and art is a wonderful way to help that. It's almost like a form of meditation. You know, I I get lost within a painting sometimes and, uh, you know, it's another world. So I'm just putting the mats over now and you can see how different they look you know we've got our own little landscapes now our own little world going on oops and um you know that bit of pen work has given the viewer sorry about the shakes um something to to look at and there we go this is what they now all look like put back together so there we are um at the end thanks for watching um thanks for getting this far um sorry about the uh, lack of video at the beginning and we seem to sort of jump right into it but i hope you found it interesting and um uh see you again soon okay bye